Hello, everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome to the Transatlantic Rebels podcast, where we talk about movies, TV shows, music, books, and occasional bonus features on cryptocurrency, world affairs, and more. In-depth reviews for deeper minds from both sides of the Atlantic. Yeah. But yeah, what's popping, man? It's been a bit of it, right? <laughs> been a long time first and foremost how have you yeah been? it's been a, a very like world changing year and a half for you yeah it has been man um yeah it's good it's good i'm enjoying it um yeah. just yeah good. parenting's no joke is it but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's all good it's all good how are you how's family everyone's good man i'm gonna have to be um I, i'm gonna have to sort of keep a lid on the swears for a little while because uh one of my kids is still up reading. He just like he's just like my brother. He would like read under the sh- uh, under the covers if he has to. He's just obsessed. Nice. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's better habits to have than some others. But um, yeah. yeah, still, let's just uh, <laughs> see how it goes. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know. I don't really know when to start because I was trying to work out. Did we last do this like just before bear market begun? Like I'm. Um, I'm trying to clock like what okay. part of the timeline we. Uh, I can help from. out on that one. So I went to the Fifty Cent concert yesterday. So there and back, all the way to the O2 and stuff. I was like, what shall I listen to? So I downloaded our previous Money Talks episodes, and I was just sort of having yeah. a quick, quick listen through some of them. And I actually made notes on like what we got right, what we got wrong, so we can go over that maybe. Just um, just recap that. It was around January last year. So it's actually I. Th- I thought it'd been about 18 months it's actually been longer than that it's closing in on two years so yeah about 21 22 months and i think we, at the end of that we probably said something like you know basically see you in the bear market because it wasn't a hundred percent sure that bitcoin had peaked at that point but it seemed kind of like it had done so, so january 22 Jan- yeah january 22 yeah so i'm just looking at the chart that's right yeah yeah, that figures. Yeah. Yeah, that figures. About 50K on Bitcoin. Yeah. That figures. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. I guess that's a good a good place to kind of um, read off of. Because had Luna happened yet at that point? I don't think Luna had happened at that point. I mean, God, if we're going to go over all the bad things that have happened in crypto since like over the last like almost two years, there's a lot, man. But yeah, I tell you what, let's, let's kick off with... A quick recap of what we got right and what we got wrong. Just a few points, basically, that, that I made notes on yesterday. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm looking forward to this because I don't know what I say at all times. So it, you know, I, I hadn't listened to it for a long time. So it's it actually mm. the first point I'll make is that when we were complete assholes, basically, about elements of crypto, we were spot on. When we were nice and like, rever- like revering sort of uh, elements or people of crypto, I think we got a bit moon boyish, if I'm honest. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and, and, we got, and we got those things wrong. So it's, it's yeah. fascinating from a psychological perspective to to analyze like what we got right and wrong. So here we go. All right. Uh, we thought that, that was the super cycle. And I think because it peaked in May, went all the way back down, and then went up again in November, then maybe we thought, yeah, this is it. This is the super cycle. And... However, you did caveat that with like, you thought that it was probably, you were like 80% that, that it might not be by the end of it. Mm-hmm. So I think you, you'd sold quite a lot of your position. I think you played it well. I'd rotated. I could have played it a lot better in terms of selling, but I did rotate well, but I didn't sell as well as I could have done, like being real. Um, <laughs> this one's a big one. On a couple of the episodes, you were, and, and I'm going to defend you on this FYI. You've really bigged up FTX and Sam Bankman Fried. Did a lot, yeah, a I lot, did. a lot, yeah. Uh, you you even had like a separate bag of whatever he was in. You would just go into. Now, yeah, what I want to do is separate the artist from the music. Yeah, yeah. So if we separate Sam uh, SBF from FTX, right, or at least like the picks that he made, because you know if he's picking Solana at three dollars. That's still a genius pick, right? Okay, he might have been manipulating things and all that kind of stuff. So the guy yeah. himself, yeah, scam, corrupt, everything, everything. But he still knew a hell of a lot about crypto. 
he made some really great picks and by proxy you by following him uh, made a lot of money basically so yeah and yeah and uh, the guy just didn't know how to run an, an investment firm clearly like it's uh, the one thing i will preface with and in fact i'll wait for you to finish and i'll add it afterwards Actually, yeah, I think so we yeah, should, continue. We come yeah. back to the come back to mm. the SBF thing because we, we mm. will cover that a bit, a bit mm. more detail. All right, so <laughs> I've made I've made notes about how much money we made you people <laughs> because some of the calls we made, my god, like and some of the messages we got back then, yeah. Now, here's the thing, when I say we made you money, did all of you people bank it at the right time? Because I remember getting a lot of top signals. Do you know what the top signals are? They weren't indicators on trading view there were the messages that i was getting from real people those were the best yeah. top signals. Yeah. Yeah. i remember around october 2021 i was like wow this feels like pff, we're almost there and that was because of the messages i was getting so to take heed of that people take heed you said you had a lot of ptsd from the previous bull cycle yeah i did i did not have that in the last bull cycle i now have ptsd without a doubt for sure yeah so now that this new bull cycle is kicking off, uh, I already feel those elements of PTSD and I feel it in a positive way where I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to mess up like I did last time in certain respects, or I'm going to try not to anyway. How do you feel about that? Like, like, do you, do you feel like you got that out of your system last time? Cause you played it well. I think I got it out of my system. I think the, the best thing is to have, like we talk about, I know we spoke about this at some point was just have a plan and stick to it in the sense of if you want to if you've got levels where you'll take 10 percent off here take 10 percent off here take 10 percent off here like it's all unrealized profit until it's sold and it's cash again so i think you just have to be very clear about your plan and from the beginning of this this year i for me i was very very clear on my plan and how i was going to play the rotation into this year and you probably notice I don't really tweet a lot now or anything like that. And it's because I, I kind of like, well, for obvious reasons, I just live in my own bubble at the moment. And I even looked the other day, had a friend WhatsApp, in one of our WhatsApp groups, like, oh, it's, Bitcoin's going up again. And I was like, shit, that's a bit early. Like, why are people noticing now? And then I noticed I put in the group back in March, like, yeah, yeah, do it now. Like, everyone, do it now. And then like no responses as well. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe no one, no one did anything. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to whatever, just see what happens. But I think it's still the same thing. It's just have a plan and stick to it. Um, because the, the meta game changes a lot in crypto and you have to be aware of the rotations and to an extent, see them coming. If you don't see them coming, you rotate too late um then you get screwed and i think that's why a lot of people fucked up last cycle like i feel like the last cycle for the beginning part you were good just holding ethereum then you were good just holding DeFi. then you had to rotate out of DeFi in time before DeFi went into a multi-year bear market that it's still in um then the trade was um solana luna and avax but you had to make sure you didn't get caught with your pants down on either of those three because Solala went all the way back down to $8. Luna blew up and AVAX, I don't even know what the lows were for AVAX in all fairness, um, $8, same as Solana. So it's, you got to have a plan and stick to it and you can't just marry your bags. Like we're not, everyone's a genius in the bull market. Sand, you, you have to understand very early that you're not a genius. It's right place, right time. You've, you've done something correct. The gift doesn't stay for long, so you just got to keep taking profits. Um, so, yeah, it's still there. And I think you need that little element of paranoia because it's very easy to look at like, the numbers on the screen and go, oh, my God, yes, like everything looks great. Look how quickly the FTX wipeout happened last year. Look how quickly the Luna blow up um affected markets um three hours capital they were people i was very fond of and wow it's easy to be perfect if you're just faking it and that's all they were do doing and one thing i did want to bring up is that last bull cycle was actually propped up by a lot of fraud and ftx was one of those things it was just all fraudulent 
So when I was looking at, when I was trading perks and I was looking at things like funding rates, now I have to go back and address everything I know about funding because none of that was real. It was fake. There weren't real funding rates. When I look at certain trades like AVAX, it was just free arrows capital pumping their bags for as long as they could with fraudulent money until they didn't have any anymore. Do you get what I mean? So mm. a lot of it you have to, I have to now look at what I, how I maneuvered that last cycle and then say, but so much of it was propped up on fraud. It's not the same this time round. So right now I'm not looking at funding rates. When I, before I would look at funding go negative and go, okay, yeah, now's the time to start hitting buy. That doesn't work now. It's, it's a different ball game altogether because it's very natural. Um, and since obviously what happened with, you know, Binance and things like that, the game is now different because you have ETFs and things like that on the way. So it becomes a lot more official. Only the big players are allowed to play now in the US more so. Um, so it's a different ball game entirely. So that there's a lot of PTSD on it. Um, but the key, key thing and the key thing I learned last time was just hit, nail the rotations, like see the rotation coming and just nail it and just don't marry your bags because the second you marry your bags, you're screwed. Cause then you'll be, you will be holding them to zero because sometimes it rotates and you'll think, oh, it'll come back. It, it probably won't. <laughs> That's the reality. Like once that trade is done, it's done. People have moved on to the next shiny thing. Um, and we're talking about, you know, imaginary coins here. Like, you know, you can't get too attached to them, especially, you know, I've seen people dump a lot of money in like Shiba and, shit like that and it's like it's all good for a quick meme trade i'm i'm up for it i love it more than anyone but man you've got to be in and out you really have to be in and out take your profits and run like none of it's real <laughs> so you know it's imaginary value we're talking about here a lot of the time yeah yeah if we're talking about taking profits i've got a shout out uh, my boy strikey priyesh he uh, runs phx academy it's actual like an actual legit academy and i've done Mm. lessons and all that kind of stuff so my trade and my technical analysis and stuff like that over the last couple of years i've been working on a lot so yeah. i thought you know the, the standard thing is in a bear market is uh, bears are for building right so yeah. i thought how can i build build myself and my own skill set and so yeah. i've been working hard on that i've still got i'd say another year uh maybe year and a half to really kind of get to where i want to get but yeah. i've been working yeah. I'm working really hard and i got a shout out priyash like as my mentor like he's a friend and stuff but like him as a mentor is mm. like really really great guy and he, he's created something good that's in, in a in a land of like fraudulent like fx academies and stuff his is actually yeah. like one which is real so uh, i'm lucky that oh, that's not, a fr yeah. yeah i'm lucky that a friend of mine actually set one up that is good so uh yeah yeah that's good so shout out shout out to him and uh yeah, like maybe one day on the next Money Talks, we can get him on because uh, he, he knows quite a lot about crypto as well. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll be dope. Okay. So, so um, yeah, if I just quickly rattle through the last stuff. Yeah. Inflation was 1.2% back then. <laughs> yeah. I just want to mention it because it, you, yeah. it was on your horizon already at that point. Like they might yeah. raise stuff, they might not. And um, you were still kind of undecided since then like obviously the shit's hit the fan as far as inflation's gone up yeah we look like right now we're at pretty much the top and it they should stagnate for a while and then come back down yeah. touch wood i mean it shouldn't go up too much more if it does so um how do you factor that in in, in a quick kind of nutshell so as far as the interest rate trade as it were i think it was more relevant in 2022 than it was in 2023 in the sense of in the market you have to just learn it. everything's priced in even if you think you've got an edge somewhere you haven't like crypto may be slightly different but if we're talking about the 10-year bond if we're talking about the us dollar we're talking about gold it's all priced in like you think people don't know this like it, it, at the top level the top traders look at the federal reserve the federal reserve's job is to give you forward guidance they're not supposed to catch you off guard they will tell you rates will be higher for longer they've said it for 24 months so there's no surprise that they go beyond five percent and it wasn't until this year that everyone realized that yeah okay it's just going to carry on going up until inflation starts to fall and it cools properly then you have to understand next year's an election year in the us 
and same way it's here in the UK. So yep. inflation number has to fall, which of course it is in both respective countries. Interest rates will get cut, which it will in both respective countries. Um, and then the money printers have to go on. Look at the UK, we've cut taxes here. Like you've just had inflation fall and now you're cutting taxes so people have more money to spend to go and drive demand again. It's going to be the same cycle, right? Um, and I think it's just understanding it. Like it's, it, t- to me, you have to not read between lines when it comes to central banks. They're very, very clear about their plans. That's their job. They're not supposed to catch you offside. Um, the second they tell you cuts are coming, it's already going to be too late. Like if you look at the markets, the move started December, January, arguably November of last year. Admittedly, I didn't get exposed until January myself. I, I didn't have any exposure until January. Um, but the move started way beyond that. But for me personally, I like I like to see confirmation first of a move. And then I don't mind missing that first, whatever that percentage which may be, it might even be 100% in some cases, but I don't mind missing that um, until I get my confirmation. So, yeah, that's my view on, like, the macro trade, as it were, at the moment. I, I think the money printers do eventually go back on. However, we don't go back down to interest rates at 1%. I think we settle somewhere around 3 to 4% base rate. Okay. okay. Um, maybe maybe lower, but I, I just don't, I don't see it. I don't think it's sustainable at this point. Yeah, I can see with the electioneering going on over the next year, they might try and drive it as low as they can. But I do mm-hmm. agree for the rest of the decade, we're not really going to get back to like, like let's, let's use a simple thing. My mortgage right now is 1.85% on a fixed. It finishes well, on not- New Year's Eve, right? Okay. So from January the 1st, yeah, I am screwed, basically. Now, three months ago, it, it, we were getting like quotes of like 6.89. Your land, that was the 4%, I think. Four, four and a half mm, well, no, nah, like basically, unless like we get a miracle in the next six weeks, it looks like about five to five point two five. So it's come down from six point eight nine over the last few months down yeah. to about five five or so. Right so now, fair, I would take five. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are um they're, they're dropping every. I know a lot of mortgage brokers, and every single day they're saying at the moment that they're dropping, but some banks are dropping a little bit yesterday. And they've dropped a little bit again today. Yeah. So I'd say just be patient. And yeah, yeah. You, you might even get lucky. You might end up with like 4.8 because That's now hoping, cuts yeah. are on the horizon. Like I said, everything's priced in. They don't need the rates to actually come down. They need the prospect of rates to come down for yeah. the Sonya rate to fall. And then you should yeah, land in the high fours, yeah. I think, is like your best case scenario. So- would i mean it's down to timing it's out of our hands effectively but we, we've got like a good mortgage broker so you know we're, we're keeping on top of it but yeah it's just yeah. interesting i thought i'd mention that that uh, that effect on the landscape um similarly yield farming which back then my god the numbers you were banding about with yield farming in the older episodes yeah wow yeah, <laughs> those yeah. seem like glory days that have absolutely they were i would never to I, pieces, man. I don't think i would touch it ever again like they were you have to really account for the element of luck yeah. of like right place right time and right and position. taking advantage of it as well yeah and just think because you know when you're looking at a thousand percent like this is some bullshit but you know like you have to just sometimes jump in and do it um i wouldn't do it again though I wouldn't do it again at this point. I like, don't I'm think I'm six. Is, there's nothing really that much out there, is there? That's that, not to that like, level. Nah, not to that level. There's certain liquidity pools you can still get into. Um, yeah, but nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it again. Like I must have like a few thousand somewhere that where well, it was a three few thousand. It's probably like nothing at this point. But you know when you just like forget about some farms that you were in. But I don't know that like, radium and shit like that. I don't know. I never so, went back to check. So you just basically, you don't see it as like a viable thing going forward, especially as like the institutions move in and stuff like that. You, you just don't see it's going to happen. Yeah. No, nah. no, nah, I don't. Nah. I, th- I think the landscape is going to change a lot. Like my plan going in to this year was, and it's slightly changed as the year went on, but my thesis going into the year was by Coinbase stock. 100%. And 
by <laughs> it was by Lido as an Ethereum beta. So Lido had a really good start this year. I think I caught it at like eighty cents or something. It went to like two dollars in like end of January, and then I peaked too early basically because it did nothing for the rest of the year. Like right now, trading at two sixty did nothing. As the year went on, my Coinbase conviction got bigger and bigger, and now it's basically since yesterday yeah. after the Binance ruling. Um, ETF one million percent is going to happen, and, and Coinbase will be the custodians of those trades. They will be the only exchange allowed to operate. Even Kraken's getting sued right now. All everything points at coinbase uh, you know when you have that moment of i didn't buy enough and the second it crossed a hundred dollars i was like i fucked up i didn't fuck up i still fucked up right <laughs> yeah. um but you know like i bought a house and stuff this year so i yeah. wasn't really trying to be over allocated yeah. early this year anyway and then like early months i looked at solana and i just noticed it hadn't gone down in a long time and I was mostly looking at the recovery since the FTX blow up and the building that was still happening over there. So I'll be up front. I've been maybe 80% Solana mm. since um, and Solana ecosystem. And, mm. and so far, airdrops wise, it's been quite good. Um, it's basically just following, I'll just, say this i'll give this one away it's basically just following ethereum DeFi season on solana all you have to do is remember the rotation that happened in DeFi season what coins went into what coins what were they the equivalent of and buy those and just wait and it's playing out in real time mm -hmm. like it is playing out in real time apologies if you can hear my daughter crying um but yeah it's, it's playing out in real time so um, that is kind of the meta game I'm looking at right now. I think Bitcoin, of course, is going to be the strongest trade. So I've had that there. Ethereum's not doing a lot at the moment. But once the BT BTC ETF gets approved, it's a copy paste job on Ethereum. So the same way Bitcoin consolidated for a long time. So BlackRock and the big boys can go and buy as much as they wanted. Ethereum's doing exactly the same right now and tricking you into believing it's not doing much. Last time Ethereum went from like 2K to 4K, that happened in about four weeks. I think four weeks, five weeks. It didn't take long. It will be exactly the same thing this time around, but a lot of people will find themselves offside when the Ethereum trade does eventually happen. And I think the rotation will kind of be Solana back into Ethereum. Okay. Uh, I see a lot of Ethereum into Solana right now over the last kind of few months because obviously yeah. Solana's taken off and it, it peaked up to about what 60, 64 or something. I can't remember. something. Yeah. yeah. Right now it's down to about 55 or so. But within the space of about 20 days, it went from like 20 to 60. And don't forget it peaked like, well, it didn't peak. It, sorry, it, it troughed around, what was it, about 8 to $12 like for ages for a Wow, after yeah. the whole FTX. Thing. You could have caught it at the 20 bucks range all the way up until October. Yeah. And I remember last time, because we were saying it on the podcast, that uh, I didn't know much about Solana until you kept mentioning it. And then I went in and got it. And I got in about $30 last time. And to be honest, I never thought I'd see it. And you, you, you yourself said it might go all the way down to like 40 or 50 We did not anticipate like $10 Solana. Um, mm. But... I picked up a bit. I should have just picked up everything. And that should have been like sold the car and just chucked in at that point. But, but, uh, but I, can, I, I don't blame I, for anyone for not having that conviction exactly. because of the Sam tie to it. 100%. And that's what I'm saying. I, I didn't. I, I wish I had the balls to make that bet at yeah. eight bucks like yeah. last year. But I didn't because I thought, all right, he must have been so heavily involved that this network's going nowhere. It, was, it wasn't until four months later. I'm kind of like, all right, it's doubled in price. It looks very stable and no one was talking about it. And it wasn't that no one was talking about it. It was so hated. 
And when something's hated, it's a bit like, hmm, why is that? Um, and then I just went into a rabbit hole for months on it before I kind of made my allocation. I think genuinely, I think Solana still would will be the trade of the bull market as far as like majors are concerned. I, I think you should be able to get back to all time highs, which is like $250, um, potentially beyond that. But I don't know, like, but I do think that like it got down to the level where before I say like, you know, if you had a hundred Solana coins, you're good. Like if you could have picked up four or 500 Solana mm -hmm. coins and that would have been a very good make it stack, like for when it goes down, because I think the networks touch wood running really, really smooth right now and they're managing to get a lot done airdrops are working people that are using it are finding it a lot smoother and cheaper than ethereum ethereum's still going to be the king and to me i trade solana not on the usd chart on the eth chart okay so all i look at is how much ethereum am i getting for my solana and i will keep going until solana is worth close to 0 0.1 ethereum and that's when i'll switch out into interesting that's into ethereum. That's very interesting yeah very interesting i think when i see like people like Raul pal uh saying that solana is the trade of this bull run i can sort because he's quite close to the institutions and a lot of these market makers then it's not a given but i can understand again like you said there was a stench around it but the reason why we called this money talks is because <laughs> once Solana tripled in price in like 21 days money talks the stench was just magically gotten rid of yeah it sprayed links all over itself bang yeah. everyone's happy to to take it out again so I, I think Solana will be a big play this this time around definitely and I think right now it's in that funny point where a lot of people will feel like they've missed it um and i was even looking at the amount of drawdown solana had in the last bull market and it regularly had a 20 percent drawdown 40 percent drawdown 30 percent drawdown all the way up and people forget it they forget yeah. how bull markets work like you know you look at the last couple of days you've literally had you know cz resign kraken now has a lawsuit against them all of these things market doesn't care shrugging it off that tells you everything that you need to know all the suits they're allocated now the big boys are allocated they just wanted that final stroke yes yeah you can see it yeah. everyone's allocated yeah, i think you've got 48 days until etf approval deadline for bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, it's not an if at this point it's uh, i was even watching something on bloomberg earlier that one of the regulators were saying is it is definitely happening it's just a case of it being released but they're allocated and like i said ethereum is just going to be a copy and paste once that's done because then bitcoin no longer will trade as volatile after that point once it's an etf blackrock hold all the coins now blackrock looks behind a lot of this man they are a lot they are a lot and they they played the, they played a blinder but this is how markets work it, it is full of corruption or Bending manipulation the rules yeah. manipulation like to get what you want you have to just think do you believe in this ecosystem or not if you do this is everything that you wanted but not really at the same time this is everything you wanted from an investment standpoint but not what you wanted from a cryptography standpoint and for the you know the use case of cryptocurrency this is not what you wanted but if you're talking about trying to secure your life and your family's life, it, what more could you want at this point? I think it's a big last hurrah here. Then I don't think it trades this way anymore. I don't think it's the last bull cycle. It's just, it doesn't trade this way. I could be wrong on that, but I don't know if it will be this way moving forward. I think we, we've said that over the last few episodes that we could see that once the institutions move in, the corporations, that there will be a flattening of that parabolic curve and the bull markets in the future. Like, I think this is the last hurrah one in terms of retail. Yeah. Of, uh, and although I would caveat that by saying that that's a very American slant on things, whereas the rest of the world is still trooping along in various ways in like the more old school wild, wild west mm. ways. 
I think America's wrapped it up. Yesterday was just like nailing the coffin, wasn't it? I mean, crazy, like BlackRock, Coinbase. It's just a complete stitch up job on CZ. I will protect CZ. I, I'm not like a fanboy of his. I just like him. And I do think he's, he's someone who seems to have principles. Whereas Sam, I think was just like, like, yeah, it is, I'm, I'm, it's now emerged. Whereas I think CZ is someone who actually seems to care. What yesterday showed is that he could have bailed out Sam overnight if he wanted to, but he knew he was running a fraud shop. Yeah. And I respect that you didn't bail that out. Um, yeah, people lost their money, but then also it looks like there's a lot. I mean, I, sometimes I look at the claims trade. Like, so the more Solana goes up, there's a lot of Solana locked up in that FTX estate. And if Solana does hit higher numbers, there's a good chance a lot of those people do get their uh, money back or close to. Okay. Interesting. So just mentioning that Binance stuff from yesterday, uh, do, do you think it's just obvious how it now plays out that US is just Coinbase and BlackRock and then the rest of the world is kind of like left to its own devices for a while? Yeah, for a while. I think a lot of the world, you know, UK, for example, will be looking at America and saying, okay, that's what we need to do. Mm. And I think a lot of the Western world will do that because they've just shown how to do it. And a lot of these places, if they've lost a case in one country, you're very likely to lose that case in the next country. Um, Coinbase right now has the favor of the government. So if they have the favor of the Federal Reserve, the SEC, um, and the US government, they'll find that same favor with the Bank of England, with the FCA, etc., because they will play by the rules. The problem with a lot of the other exchanges is they didn't want to play by the rules, i.e. KYCing people and things like that. Whereas, you know, in what planet can you draw out a hundred grand, no KYC? It doesn't make sense. You're not going to last for long in that environment. So, and I think that's the problem a lot of people are having on FTX now. They've lost their money, but they never KYC'd in the first place. How can they ever claim it back? Right. Okay. I it's, like robbing, it's like robbing a drug dealer. They can't go to the police, right? So <laughs> that's, it's the exact same situation with FTX. You could, may I like you could create an account on FTX as Mister Blobby, and it would go through. Like it, they weren't KYCing people there. Um, Binance, exactly the same thing. There was no KYC happening. Coinbase at least have a KYC process. Kraken, to be fair, do have a KYC process. Um, but Coinbase is kind of like the tried and tested. It is regulated. You know they're reporting to regulators, which is a good thing. No one wants to pay tax, but you have to. At least if they're reporting to the regulators, they will get favorable treatment by the regulators because they're playing by the rules. So that's why Coinbase was kind of like the obvious trade. The second the ETF news started coming out, then it just became a no-brainer that this is the direction it goes in. I have no idea what the target is on the Coinbase stock price though, to be entirely honest with you. What, did, what was the IPO at, 300, 400? Some, yeah, something like that. I, I seem to remember 250 to 300, but I'm not sure. I, and what, this year it dropped down to 50 bucks, right? Around yeah. January. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it could go. I, I would happily take a lot of profit at 200 though, okay. personally. But I, th I think it's a, a long-term hold. It, it might just be a, a just leave it for a while. But then I guess yeah. if, if you've got a crypto cycle and Coinbase is so it's, closely yeah. linked to it, it might be smarter to just, you know. I, I would rotate Coinbase and just into Microsoft. And that's the long-term play for me. I, I'm, okay. I think stocks, why, I, one thing I've started to do now is really concentrate my investments instead of having baskets. Um, one, because of my attention span, um, just, just research wise, I just haven't got the energy. Um, and I just like to, one thing I did well last cycle was I nailed Ethereum and it was because I had a strong concentrated bet. So I just like to work that way. Now I just want to have my thesis. If I get proven wrong, it's fine. Then I know I have to go back to the drawing board. Um, but if it works, at least I'm allocated enough. I think one place a lot of people go wrong in crypto is they hold like 20 different altcoins, but they all move the same as each other. So if the market goes down 8%, all your altcoins are down 8%. The joy of holding Solana this year so far is if 
a couple of your other little coins were down, Solana still ended up being up or it rebounded the fastest. Um, and that's one key takeaway I'd give to everyone is when drops happen, look what coins rebound quickest. That usually tells you the state of play and where the rotation is heading. Or, or well, not heading, it's already there. It's just someone's caught it before you did. Solana was always doing that this year. Um, and even the Solana, or, like all coins, like even like, I don't know, like, have you have you got into Bonk yet? Yeah. Yeah. As in like, I mean, I, I missed the parabolic rise, unfortunately, but uh, I'm keeping an eye on it anyway. But like, even Bonk, right? Like today, 31%. And this is without, and yeah, you've missed a parabolic rise. But actually, if you look at market cap compared to like your peeps and Shibas and yeah. et cetera, it's worth allocating a, a G2 and just leave it there and see yeah. what happens. If it goes crazy, it goes crazy. If you use, if you lose the grand, you lose the grand. It's going to be one of those, I think, like, because how often do people get into meme coins early? Yeah. Let's face it, like, like, at least this is one in the Solana ecosystem. I think, has it been listed on Binance today? I heard it was going to. I'm not sure. Once retail get their hands on it, mm. then you know that extracts at least another 100%. And I know, like, Pepe's trade. on pepe's on everything pretty much from what i remember i i, think I have some pepe i bet i was on binance um, yeah um that that's again that's still that's still worth a grand to me yeah i'd say like i think it's like depends on your stack right but i think those ones are worth like a good five percent of your stack because you need one to go if one goes you know yeah it can be very very like pepe earlier this year paid for a lot of for me yeah like <laughs> like it was nice I, i'll just i'll just caveat caveat the um put a grand in because if you're like a normal person watching this <laughs> a grand is a lot of money and uh i'd probably like taper that down to 100 quid for, if you're just a normal yeah person. we do 100 pound yeah and then yeah, you yeah. Get 10x's you get a thousand yeah it? exactly it's but i nice think with, with bonk i kind of i only realized what was really going on once it hit like about 1200 <laughs> percent, and i was like okay you can't really jump in like at that point if you're just looking at the sort of you know mm. technicals aspect like you need to just see how it goes for a yeah. little bit i still yeah. think if i'm honest i still think that we should be going down a bit at some point before yeah. the halving you know almost definitely uh, yeah, almost definitely like but i mean you never know because this is crypto and i think if it goes up too much i mean some people think we're going to get all time highs this year which i think is very unlikely but even we're in November now. Ideally, we should not really be breaching 70,000 over the next year because I would prefer like a slow and steady climb up with the usual drops and stuff. I think if it goes too parabolic too quickly, that's actually a bit of a red flag to me. And yes. then it gets into unpredictable territory because I'd rather that the cycle and the fractals are copied, not necessarily copied and pasted from the previous cycles, but at least mirror them a bit, you know. Whereas if the, the I would know that the big boys are really manipulating everything if everything just changes over the next year. And like yeah. we're at, you know, like 120 in a year's time, something like that. That would make me a bit nervy, I'd, I'd be honest. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, I'd be out by then. Yeah. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, pro, I'll be totally honest with you. I would be completely out by then. I wouldn't. If I saw 100 on Bitcoin, I would be out. That was it. I, I would never return. Yeah, that price. Um, but what I will say is that I think this is year one of the bull market. I think this goes on till 2025. Um, yeah, anyone exactly. that doesn't expect horrible, deep um, corrections is bugging because they're going to happen. They're going to be horrible, just like the last ones were, though. Yeah, like it happens every time, right? And I think what happens is the PTSD. Everyone forgets. Everyone forgets that you get deep corrections. In fact, deeper corrections in a bull market. Bear markets happen slowly. That's what's horrible about a bear market. It grinds down, then it continues grinding down, and it just goes on for 365 days, and it's painful. Bull markets are a bit weird. You'll have a day where it jumps up 20%, then a couple of days of nothing, then another day of 30%. Then a 40% drop, and then the next day, 60%. And what you find is that the people that overtrade buy, sell, 
I'll go into this coin, go into that coin. They end up with 5% gain over 12 months, 24 months. Because a lot, of, it's a lot of people, you know, like when you know you've told them to do something and you know they did it. And I'm like, oh, like, you must have done. You must have done good. Like, yeah, no, I've done all right. What do you mean you've done all right? How have you only done okay? <laughs> oh, because I went out and then I bought again and I went out. There's only about, I'd say, 20 days a year in all markets that if you're in, that's where the gains are made. If you're only in on the other 345 days, you get 5 6%. But the big gains, like you said, Solana, it's only been the last 20 days that it's been going. If you've been holding since January, it's been a bit boring all that time, but you had to be in on the last 20 days to catch it. So if you only bought 25 days ago, you got the same gains because you were in. But people that are over trading, it doesn't work. So you, you, you have to have conviction. Like the, crypto really tests your conviction. Like if are you with this idea or not? If you don't believe in it, then you've got to be prepared to cut your losses early. But also you can't just yeah, I'll sell this and oh, this one's going up, so I'll buy that. If it's already going up, you're usually late anyway. Exactly. By that point. So there needs to be, crypto is not as easy as just buy green or buy red, if I'm honest with you. Like, you have to see, you have to see what the meta game is and go after that, the rotation, because it's really clear rotations that do happen um, yeah. in this. Um, yeah. I don't know what what are your um thoughts at the moment like what are your plans if you have formulated i mean what what i've been telling people recently because now i'm getting the the crypto calls the whatsapp messages <clears> the dms <throat> i'm like we're in a bull cycle right? <clears throat> and people are like hang on really what do you mean we're in a bull cycle i'm like we're in a bull cycle it might be early <clears throat> yeah and it might continue for the next one to two maybe and a half years i don't know let's see but we're in a bull cycle right now. And this was the year that you should have been buying. This was the year. Now, I'm not saying from, you know, straight from January, you should have been buying like, like constantly. But really, that's what you should have been doing. <laughs> like, yeah. To be honest, yeah. you know, like, um, the, the theory is generally is to dollar cost average on the way down. Yeah. And then not on the way up. But I would slightly take issue with that this year because say from january january 2nd to now bitcoin's up 130 percent yeah yeah how can you and, argue that it's, and it's still a, in it's the not a bull market yeah. exactly this is a bull market but it's still only in in the 30k region right if we're looking at i mean i've got a it's got to be at least 120k i would say is what i reckon or at least six figures yeah let's say that for for the ultimate peak but that's still three to four x where we are now yeah, so if you just start buying now and we'll get other corrections, I'm sure, then you're still going to make three to four X, right? But then it's not too late. I don't think anyone's too late, too late. You are for certain projects, maybe, but I don't, in general, you're going to make money, right? As long as you're buying now and methodically, then you, you should be fine, basically. If you leave it a year, okay. that's when you're getting late. Yeah, if you leave it another six months and that's when you're the sucker. Uh, so it's kind of like the stages to this bull market right now. But yeah, saying I that, I haven't, that, I haven't committed as much as I wish I'd done this year, just simply because life, you know what I mean? Like, just like you said, you know, you bought a house and all that kind of stuff. I've had a lot going on this year, so I haven't been able to allocate as much as I wish I had done. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, in general, I was telling people last November, December, that this was the kind of end game for the drop of Bitcoin. You know, I thought it'd go down to maybe 15. It ended up being 15 and a half, 16, I think it was. Yeah. And then bang, that's a great been up. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're going to have some deep corrections where you can potentially allocate more yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah. There's going to be plenty of opportunities where even like Solana, like, yeah, it looks great right now. Once it takes that revisit down to $30, then yeah. that will test everyone's conviction in that trade. Um, 100%. because it will it might go down to 20 to be honest so yeah. I, I, I am expecting that revisit back, back down it's going to I think Solana is going to consolidate for a little while now anyway because the plays are happening on the Solana network currently so 
everyone's just trying to make more Solana at this yeah. point, um, which is not a bad way to go. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting couple of years for sure. Um, but I think it's just about allocating correctly. And I th think don't for a lot of people, most people, 99% of people don't use leverage, um, buy spot, cold storage it, wait until your Uber driver mentions crypto and then hit the sub button. Simple as that. That, that literally happened to me. It, it really is a story that my wife actually hates because we were coming back from holiday and uh, the Uber driver, I noticed uh, something on his, on his phone and it was like crypto. So I was like, are you into crypto? Uh, and he, he loved it, right? Mm. He'd bought in at the top. Yeah, and he yeah. he put in twenty k at the top, and at the stage that uh, this was like a year and a half ago now, the twenty k had gone down to two k, and and his wife was screwing at him and all this kind of stuff, and he was still like, yeah, but we're all gonna make it, and I was like, yeah, man, <laughs> <laughs> and like my wife just was listening to this this whole conversation, just like oh, Jesus Christ kind of thing, but yeah. that you know. That, that's something you like, you need to have a bit of knowledge. Yeah. If you're going to commit those kind of sums, if you're going to put in a hundred quid, you don't need to have any knowledge. Just have a, have fun, just munt in whatever, do what you want. Right. If you're going to commit serious sums of money, you need to know what you're doing and you can't rely on YouTubers because they will show you, they will pump and dump yeah. you, they will rug pull you. And you know, you gotta be a bit smart. So, you know, we kept saying it in fairness all throughout last time yeah we kept saying all these things but people have to learn the hard way so yeah you do you know you, you need to lose a little bit of money yourself sometimes like you know have some money on ftx and lose it and shit like that do you get what i mean like i think a lot of these are necessary lessons like i lost money like on bitrex like on cryptopia sorry like back in 2018 like you learn the lessons really the hard, hard way um, because there is no recourse in any of these. I think the Cryptopia fucking court case is still going on. Like, it's never gonna, it's never gonna happen. In fact, I know the coin that I was invested in on that platform was called like Mothership, which at the time seemed like a good idea. Mothership doesn't exist anymore. Like, it's worth zero. So even if that comes back, there's there's nothing there, right? Um, there's a lot of lessons to learn. But crypto is definitely not as simple as people think it is. But if you do the re research and crypto is still and I, I know i said this before it's the only place that will reward you for just testing out new technology mm. like test out a new exchange like people who tested out the jupiter exchange on solana are going to be handsomely rewarded for that they when they do their airdrop i think they've just started um you'll get rewarded just for using an exchange um, for using certain NFT platforms, you will be rewarded. There's a Solana um, platform right now that does NFTs. They haven't got a token yet. All you've got to do is just buy some bullshit NFT for like one soul just to have some activity on the platform. Yeah, an airdrop that's worth two, three grand for 50 quid. Wow, it's more than worth it. So, and again, this is where I got lucky a lot. In the last cycle, I just played with stuff, bridged to AVAX early, silly little things like that. Just for using the bridge, I got 2K, let's say, just for that on that airdrop. So I still think airdrops are going to be a big play this year. Um, but just experiment with it. I think crypto isn't about investing. It's just about learn the technology, figure it out. And nine times out of 10, you'll get paid for it because they need to attract people into it somehow. And that's always going to be from the investment perspective. There's really low cost, like low barrier entry to just go in and test out some of these platforms. Um, and I just strongly advise people to do that. If you're going to sit on your laptop and research some stuff on crypto, I'd much rather just figure out what new projects are on Solana or Ethereum and just dive into them and check them out as opposed to watching youtube because like you said it's there's nothing there's nothing of value on crypto on on youtube apart from people who are pre-invested seed round into coins trying to dump them on you there is nothing yeah. else yeah there, there, I'd, I'd say there's there's a few there's a handful of actually useful crypto channels 
the vast majority of them are just like, yeah, whatever. Um, you mentioned NFTs then. I was going to mention NFTs as the next thing. So good segue. Are you still bullish on NFTs? Are you still holding a lot? What, how do you think it's been? I haven't really been in the NFT game this year or last year, to be honest. So it's, it's been a little while now. So what's been going on? I think I'm still holding some bullshit. Um, like I haven't really been paying too much attention just because I wasn't really allocated a lot by that point as much into it. By the time we were buying pictures of kittens and penguins and shit like that, um, it, you, knew, you knew where this was going. You've got to just join in on the mania and make your money out of it. I think NFTs, pudgy penguins are still a good way to go. It's traded very, very well throughout the whole bear market. When any NFTs eventually get their resurgence, it will be the NFTs of the last cycle that do very well. So okay. if you do have the capital and have and understand that it's highly illiquid until the bull market comes in, maybe it's worth allocating. Um, but really, I would say NFTs, it's a certain kind of investor that knows how to flip them and do the work. It's not my bag. I think it's kind of funny, but it's not for me like the long-term way to allocate, to be honest. So I won't really be touching NFTs. Maybe ask me in a year if it starts and I get sucked in again, I might get sucked in. But um, yeah, you were pretty deep in it, man, last time. I was, I was loving it. I was loving it. But again, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It rewarded you like to be on the blur platform. Um, it was only OpenSea that didn't reward anyone, but so many of the platforms like looks rare. Rare did a yeah. airdrop, Blur did an airdrop, like, it just paid to explore. And that's my key thing with crypto, just at least try everything out. Because yeah. if you get an airdrop out of it, that airdrop usually is at least gonna be worth a thousand dollars, 750, 800 pounds. Who's gonna, why would you turn your nose up at that? It's literally free money. Mm. All you got to do I is think wait what, to arrive in your wallet and sell it. Yeah. I think what makes me a bit nervy about this NFT run is AI, AI generated photos, uh, AI generated images and NFTs and stuff like that. Mm. Last time you knew you were buying bullshit, basically. Yeah. It was just a copy and paste job, right? Yeah. This time I'm like, is AI just going to flood the market with so much stuff that you no longer know like what is going to make it basically? Cause it's most probably. I, I, I think once the NFT bull run really gets going, the amount of projects is going to be absolutely insane. Like, I don't know yeah. how many were, there were last time. Say, for example, if there were like 5,000, I don't know, whatever. This time, I'd say there's going to be like 20 times that like, easily because it's going to be so dumbed down and easy for people to do with AI that you, you would have to have no artistic knowledge whatsoever and very little knowledge of how to do the whole work process and flow and stuff like that. So, you know, I, think I don't know. The best way like to understand it. NFTs is they're altcoins with images. And if you understand the way altcoins will run, your bonks, for example, your Shibas, it's e easy to make the NFT plays. You okay. just have to go where the crowd goes and try and anticipate where will the crowd go next. The bonk trade, let's look at it in, in hindsight and now let's look at it into what happens next. The bonk trade is just the dog coin on Solano. That's it. People like dog coins. We don't know why they like dog coins, but we know they like them. <sighs> so it's worth allocating a little bit because money seems to be flowing into the Solana network. Then you've seen the parabolic move over this last two weeks, three weeks, let's just say. But it's still a bit of an echo chamber. There's not loads of people in bulk. Let's be honest. There's, there's not. It probably hasn't got that many holders compared to your Pepe's and not, you know, dog etc then it lands on binance then you get the next flock of people because the difference with bonk to like pepe for example when pepe got listed on binance there was nowhere to short pepe at that time and a lot of the time people use it the second they get the perp they short it so they can hedge their position off 100 you, you've 
been able to trade bonk all this time on perps on other platforms so if it does get listed on binance what we're not expecting is a blow off top because it's just going to attract more retail it doesn't mean everyone's going to short because if you had a bonk bag and you wanted to hedge it you have been able to all this time on bybit so it's just understanding where the mentality is and also remember people don't get any more intelligent you might think <laughs> they do they don't um and i think just bank on people's i'm not going to say stupidness but just bank on their gambling mentality yeah. and know, know that like you said that uber driver bought at the top people wait for it to go up like a thousand percent before they think yeah now's the time you don't know how many people i've told about solana this year or like mainly solana to be fair and lido and lido is a hilarious one because it's a if you're trading it it would be the most frustrating coin to trade if you're just holding it it's pretty easy coin to hold. It's been worth between one and one fifty and two dollars for the whole year. It hasn't really done much else. But again, for me, I understand what I'm buying. It's an Ethereum beta. So the second Ethereum starts to perform, Lido will outperform it. It's higher beta. That's the problem. I think when people go in blind and start throwing darts at the board, you will only get those type of rewards. Some people will end up with the hundred X and they'll do brilliant. And then they'll think, oh, oh, you know, I need to invest more. They get their first win. They think they're about to get their second win and they'll put 10 grand into it. And, you know, fooling his money is soon parted. Yeah. Um, it, this is no different to investing in stocks. I've seen people lose money on stocks and it goes to zero. This happens. This is the free market. Now the major players are involved. It will trade like the free market, but people will be taught very dangerous lessons like you it's not as simple as just oh yeah i think i have an edge i completely am aware of the moment i think i have an edge i'm one of probably a hundred thousand people <laughs> that have realized something but yeah. luckily that's still a small enough minority to make a good trade out of it but you're never going to be the only one like this isn't the big short movie <laughs> like yeah <laughs> you know like and and like the big shorts it's, it's funny because someone tweeted saying that big short is just a movie about being bearish two two years too early like <laughs> which it is like um and michael burry whole like like life is yeah, like basically yeah. just and look at him since. yeah yeah and look at him since like he's got blown out in the bull market this yeah. last year right so I don't know. You can't marry your bags. You can't marry your thesis. What I'm saying today, I may not believe in 30 days from now, because if I get presented with evidence that that's not the case, you have to be ready to switch out. You, you can be wrong. And I think that's the key thing to always remember. You can be wrong. It may be that you're wrong, or it may be there's fraudulent shit going on because it's happened. <laughs> like you might be in a coin and you think everything's great and it might turn out is run by a scammer i just had like one more one more thing like what's your uh, you talked about eth what about things like that you're bullish on like atom or, or any other chains not bullish atom anymore <laughs> no um i like celestia it's not technically a chain tickers tia um i received an airdrop of it and it's actually an airdrop I've held and probably won't sell. Um, in fact, I've added to it since okay. then. It's trading at about six bucks at the moment. Two weeks ago, it was trading at two. So, so it's been, um, I'm quite fond of that. I think it's a good long-term hold. I think, don't hold me to it, but it could be the Solana of this cycle potentially but i'll see i'm i'm allocated i'm i'm not so heavily allocated that it would affect me i'm allocated but i think it's cheap enough to be allocated enough and the reward be very handsome mm -hmm. if it goes right i e buy 100 coins the same way like solana was last cycle buy 100 of them you know it turns into just, just you know, in case yeah 
half a half a house deposit, right, or something like yeah. that. So yeah, but yeah, that, that's it. That's what all I'm really eyeing. I'm not really getting too fruity with it at the moment. How about how about for you? Are you? Is oh, there anything uh, you're looking at? Yeah, I've liquidated liquidated everything. I'll put it into Cardano actually, because I think this is finally that. No, I'm joking, people. Please don't 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 listen. Uh, every the bull cycle people will make fun of cardano and it won't be different this time they might be like no. the fifth biggest coin or whatever but they will move at a snail's pace and yeah. uh, basically most of their holders just out in japan doing i don't know what and uh, charles hoskinson's great orator a brilliant snake oilsman and uh mm. yeah no nah, no nah. i'll just i'm not going to say steer clear of cardano because you could definitely make some money but do not marry that coin Please, for the love of God, Definitely do not, not do not marry that. That one is is going to be like the coin that will just be around forever. Like saying, I could have made it. And you yeah, know what and it will always be like your your mate that knows nothing that tells you, yeah, Cardano, this is the one. Like this is the one you need to be into. Um, it's kind of like uh, okay. Do you know what the problem is? It's because I never want to tell someone they're wrong. Um, I just like smile and nod. Because That's I also best way. think that, man, what if they get like a hundred percent gain? I don't want to talk them out of it. Yeah, like, yeah. You never know, right? You, like, you, you do get it does happen. So you kind of just smile and nod your way through it, and also most of the time, pretend you haven't even got any crypto. <laughs> That's why right. it's kind of like it's, sometimes it's not worth the conversation. Yeah, with with, with most people because they don't believe in it like it's christmas or something but they don't believe in it until <laughs> so late into the cycle that you don't even want to talk to anybody about it because you know they're not going to sell at the right you know they're not going to sell at the wrong time uh, they're not going to sell at the right time sorry you know they're not going to and because no one ever sells the top and no one ever buys the bottom the only way you know the same way you said you dca your way in you also dca your way out you keep paying yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. We got a question. I have a hundred k. Where should I invest it? I'll send you my bank details. So send was, it to me. I was going to make that joke. <laughs> beat me to it. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where I'd invest it. Like, is it your only hundred k? Is, is it a hundred k that you can afford to not have tomorrow? It's. I mean, everyone. One's life is also, different, also right? what what currency is that 100k as well is it uh, yeah is it if we're talking 100k sterling or i mean we're talking so, dirhams or rupees or i don't know yeah like, I, I i feel i feel like the only thing as well is like tradfi markets as well like i said mentioned earlier i feel like microsoft is a, a great decade trade right now like i don't know you're more of a stocks man than i am like i said i only really allocate into one or two i don't really go for baskets of stocks but i have like my ISAs in indexes and shit like yeah. that and i feel like i look at those indexes and feel like these fund managers i've outperformed all of you for 10 years and still i hold money with you idiots like you gotta be really careful with the indexes that you that you choose you have to do your research with indexes and not be afraid to switch it as well yeah so, yeah I, yeah I, I get lazy sometimes with indexes yeah i do I, I admittedly i do like i'll sit there and be like oh I'd, i'll just leave it for now and yeah the um the, the person is saying that they've got 100k in euros that's just free and sitting there so this, this is not financial advice and uh, you have to do your own research but i would say diversify it like i wouldn't put all that into crypto because 100k is already a significant amount of money like you don't want to mess around with that you know put it this way you want to keep as much of that 100k as possible if everything goes wrong and crypto is not the way to do that <laughs> like it's just no it's just not but if i wanted to do a crypto trade i'll give you my hypothetical hundred thousand okay. hypothetical okay. i want to go okay. all crypto go i'll go 50 percent coinbase stock 25 percent btc 25 percent solana solana not ETH, and, okay. and i'll just wait i think that's um as safe in inverted commas as, you, as you're gonna get yeah yeah because the risk so. is only actually on 25 percent of it i'd say yeah yeah 
And well, hypothetically, I mean, if I, I were maybe, to. I'd maybe um, say 5% of that to 5K just for like mess around money. Mean coins. To, to shit like that. Yeah. Well, like mean coins or NFTs or just for playing around with. Like if you're actually serious about crypto and you want to get into like the more fun, technical rabbit hole aspects of it, then yeah. 5K is a good little amount to keep and it's not going to like bankrupt you. So... Yeah, I mean that's that's not a bad shot. Yeah, you'll beat you'll beat um, inflation on that allocation. I think Coinbase is up thirty percent just in the last month. Like it's, it's stocks generally are actually performing very well. Like tech yeah. stocks, I'd say well. a, a, con- a concentration of stocks are performing well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah, that's a better way to describe it. Yeah, um, but I mean your your thesis on Microsoft and Coinbase. I mean that's that's pretty pretty spot on. I say you can't go too far wrong with that. All right, let's start to um, just wrap up a couple of other things, unless you had specific things, because I did make a list. All right. Um, n- no, I've kind of just been freestyling it on yeah, no my problem. approach. My approach is a bit more boring this time. To no, no, that's you. good. It's yeah. a bit more real. I actually wanted us just to sort of like ease our way back into being yeah. So, yeah. So we've discussed ETFs. I mean, an ETF really is like, like someone said it the other day, that it's like a handshake or a bridge between like crypto and tech and the institutions yeah yeah from like new this new tech to old money so i think once the etf etf comes it will take a little while but the money will flood in i could just see it i mean even with my own like pension and stuff i'll be calling up my advisor and saying for the next two years (laughs) you know i want if there's a bitcoin etf going i want it for the next two years you know what i'm saying that's just a no-brainer I, th- I think a lot of advisors will start saying to people, yeah, 5% of your portfolio should be held in Bitcoin and Ethereum, yeah. for example. I think that will be that will be the approach. I, I, so, yeah, I think 100% it's a no-brainer, which is why it would, would be the thing that really kicks off the bull market. Maybe kicks off the first sell-off, like the first deep correction, though. That's, in what, I'm fairness. Come on, that's, that's um, what I'm hoping. I think approval day and of course we're never going to know when that day is it will just happen one day um approval day might be your first deep correction yeah i would or maybe not the first it may just be a deep correction yeah Uh, i think it might kick off a correction because it's it would be like you said priced in buy uh sell the news all that kind of stuff but let's see okay main narratives of this cycle I'll, i'll just sort of spin through what i think mine are what it's shaping up to be Obviously ETF, but if you're talking within crypto, I'd say AI. I reckon that's going to be a big one. It's already been popping off recently. Gaming yeah. is an obvious one. We mentioned it last time around, yeah. but I think it's going to be even bigger this time. And uh, institutions, institutions will, we've discussed that at length now, to be honest, so I don't need to go into that. Is, is there anything else like narrative wise that you think might just catch us out of left field? The Solana narrative is going to catch a lot of people offside. Okay, I'm convinced of that. Uh, the Solana ecosystem is going to catch a lot of people under or not allocated. Um, the same way DeFi season was, it, it's just going to catch a lot of people out because this stuff happens really quickly, like it's slowly and then all at once. Um, right now, it's still kind of slow moving. You know, you've got nowhere near as much money in the Solana network as you did at that point in the ethereum network let alone what you do have on it now i think a lot of people are going to get caught out on it i think the solana narrative is one that is still being ignored more so because the coins going up but no one's looking into the ecosystem and i think that's the rabbit hole everyone needs to go down if you see a coin going up and it's l1 or an l2 what does it do what is on that network why are people buying into the idea you need to check it out for yourself. A to see if you want to have a trade and if you want to allocate, and B to get some free money from some airdrops. So I think Solana, just from an airdrop perspective, could make people, t- you know, ten to thirty k over the next twelve months just by playing around with stuff. You're never going to know what's going to airdrop. Unfortunately, there's no notice. You only find out when it happens, and they'll then when you find out it's too late because a snapshot's been taken. I think just play around with everything. I think dedicate an hour or two a week just to mess about with different ecosystems, their exchanges, 
and then see what happens. Okay. Anything else apart from Solana, narrative-wise? No, I think you're right. I think AI is going to be p potentially the biggest one. Um, gaming always is. They, there will be an NFT narrative at some point, and it will just be down to if you choose to be involved in it or, or not. But it will be the typical Bitcoin into Ethereum, into other altcoins, back into Bitcoin, sell everything, walk away. Yeah. Okay. I think that's pretty much it, man. To be honest, yeah. on my side. Is there anything else that you wanted to... Um, no, I th think that kind of covers everything for now because it's one of those you've either caught up with everything as it's been going on or you haven't. If you haven't, you don't, don't really need to know too much about the FTX blow up at this point. You don't need to worry too much about CZ stepping down at this point. You just need to understand that all of these things have happened to clear the way for the ETF. Yeah, and they have happened by design. So, ETF halving, they're the two things in front of us. Even if you don't want to get too creative, Bitcoin is the easy trade, the easy narrative to go in. It's boring, the gains aren't as much, which is why it will always do so well because it will catch so many people. The amount of people I talk to that hold crypto but don't have a penny in Bitcoin. It's crazy. So even though many people, like you said, Bitcoin's up 100% this year, I'd say most people are still under allocated or not allocated whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's too much else to add to that, to be honest, because I think, like I said, we're going to keep this one a bit shorter, just dip our toes back into it. Mm. All, all I'd say is, this is a bull market, people. Do not get it confused. Don't get it twisted. Don't go sell your house right now. Well, don't sell your house generally in that respect to invest into crypto, but crypto. But just understand that you should have, ideally, have been buying something this year, but you're not too late. This is like the start in earnest of the proper bull cycle. So, you know, and there's a lot of news, bad news, news is noise, just try and filter it out and drill down on what's actually important because otherwise you'll get confused. You'll get so confused. Yeah. Every other day, there's some sort of major shit going on right now with crypto and everything is the end of the world. You'll get articles. I literally, like, on my phone, it came up today with an article saying, is this the end of crypto? Is Binance the end of crypto? Is this a... This is not the end of crypto. No, no, absolutely not. They just want you to think that so that they can sweep it up for themselves. They can buy your coins from you. Exactly. Like, I, do you know the main thing is, I think, in, in any investment, are you an investor or are you a trader? Is what you have to ask yourself. If you are an investor, an investor plays out over particular time frames. You can be a short-term investor, a medium-term, or a long-term investor. Decide which one you're going to be. Do your research. Allocate into said investments and wait until the narrative you have predicted in your head plays out. If you're a trader, good luck to you. I, there's no advice for being a trader because everyone has their own style, some people yeah. are technical, fundamental, whatever it may be. Um, but if you're an investor, which I'd say probably applies to, it applies to 100% of us, but on a day-to-day, -day, I'd say it applies to 80% of us. Don't start trading. I've seen loads of people lose their or diminish their crypto stacks just by over trading. And just remember, what are you denominating against? Are you denominating against pounds and pence? Are you denominating against trying Bitcoin because you want more BTC? Are you denominating into Ethereum? Like I am, for example, that is what I'm denominating against. Um, you have to know what you're denominating against. Sell whenever you feel comfortable, whenever that funny, feeling in your stomach comes that's usually when you should do it or when you start i don't know going on boat websites and start thinking you know what i could buy one of those <laughs> um or you know if you if you start looking at eight eight bedroom fucking mansions on right move usually that's the signal that yeah. this, this has gone too far and it's maybe time to start realizing some if not all of that profit and then also just remember you're not and not everyone makes the million pound gain um, if you can turn 10 into, if you can turn 10 into 20, first of all, it's phenomenal. Let's be honest about it. A hundred percent gain is 
crazy. You tell your parents you've done that. They won't even believe you. Yeah. You can turn 10 into 50 or 10 into 100. Sell and fucking run for the hills. What are you still gambling for? To gain what? To get to 105? Or suddenly you think you can now get to 500? Like, sometimes it's just knowing when to cut. Get yourself into something safer. I'm a massive crypto advocate, but I'm not an advocate for every Tom, Dick and Harry to be allocated and be over trading it because they're going to, you know, they're going to lose their money. Be sensible. You know, there's a lot of good stocks that are a lot safer on a longer time horizon, which if you can make a good stack out of crypto, you can really turn into a nice little pension fund for yourself. Um, that I would say is my main advice. Just don't, don't trade at all or don't over trade really. Um, and you'll be okay. You'll, I think you'll make it through this market and do quite well. But for most of you, you're going to end up buying too late and you'll sell too late. And there's nothing we can do about that. But at the very least, if I've told you, then I'll sleep at night knowing I gave the right advice. That's good. Good advice, man. And also add to that, don't leverage trade for the love of God. If oh, you don't yeah, know what you're doing, mean. unless you've got like a good, I'd say at least a good two, three years of experience, then uh, in other things, even then, I still would advise people not to leverage trade with crypto because it can wreck you. You need to be really confident. I, I am 100% spot. I, yeah. I do not leverage anymore. Yeah, I, I don't touch it because it's, I don't. I don't need the extra aggro. I really don't. I, I don't need the extra stress of one crazy market movement happening and taking you out of your trade. It's really not worth it. No, one hundred percent agree. Okay, well, people, we hope you listen to us, and we've told you it's a bull market. We've told you you should be buying. Come back back to us uh, well i reckon we should come back around halving time which is kind of march april i was going to say to q1 into q2 isn't it yeah, yeah. i think that's a good time to check back in yeah and uh, by that time ets should have happened halving will be around the corner i reckon we would have had a bit of a dip hopefully let's see i think it'll be healthy and um yeah yeah let's let's see how it all plays out basically yeah i don't think the excitement really happens to the end of next year I think it's about staying patient and um, yeah. holding your nerve until that point. So I think people have got, like you said, they've got a lot of time yeah. to um, do something with this. Um, just got to do it, right? 100%. Cool, man. It's good to catch up. Yeah, you too, man. Um, we need to sort out that dinner anyway. But yeah, I'll, um, definitely. I'll, I'll message you about that separately. Yeah, definitely, man. All right, bro. Cool. All right, I'm going to get these videos saved and then I'll, I'll send them to you. Perfect. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Love to the family. All right, man. You too, bro. Take care. All right. Peace.